Hi, it's Wednesday, November 6th. We're watching now Hurricane Rafael quickly approaching western Cuba. 24 hours ago, it was passing Jamaica and moving toward the Cayman Islands. It has continued that journey northwestward and, as expected, has intensified steadily throughout that time, with an eye now evident here in satellite imagery and hurricane warnings out for this portion of Cuba with very strong winds, heavy rains, and coastal surge coming for this region. This is the zoomed in satellite picture showing a well-defined eye now showing up in satellite imagery. This is moving up just east of the Isle of Youth and will cross the island of Cuba and enter the Gulf of Mexico later today or tonight. And if we look at the radar imagery out of Grand Cayman, you'll see the eye showing up there. Interestingly, you can also see a concentric ring structure with an outer eye wall or band surrounding that inner eye. The system will likely not have time to actually undergo an eye wall replacement cycle like this would typically foretell, as it will be disrupted by the land mass first, but it will likely require some significant reorganization of the inner core after it crosses Cuba and enters the Gulf of Mexico. This is some aircraft data from the Hurricane Hunter aircraft that's a couple of hours old now as of this recording, but you can see the pressure value at the beginning of the flight was 978 millibars. By the end of the flight, it was 967, so a steady fall in the pressure value indicating intensification here as the storm moves northwestward. There's the Isle of Youth right there, and uh, maximum winds are now in the Category 2 hurricane range. Everything in purple here is above hurricane force at the flight level of the aircraft, and max winds at the surface are now estimated to be about 110 miles per hour, and it's possible that Rafael could even be a Category 3 hurricane before it interacts with the island of Cuba. Please stay safe in this area today as the inner core of Raphael comes in. Looking at the GFS forecast now, this is the 500 millibar flow showing Raphael today. And when it crosses Cuba, we talked yesterday about the big fork in the road that this storm has in terms of its steering. You can see this big ridge off to its northeast, which for the moment is guiding the storm steadily northwestward. Once it gets out into the Gulf, though, we start to see a bit of a swelling of another ridge over the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. So you'll see that there ends up being two competing ridges, a weakening ridge near Florida right here, which is trying to usher the storm northward towards the Gulf Coast. And there's another nosing ridge here, which is imparting some northerly flow that counters that and is trying to slow the storm down. Underneath this mid-level flow, all of the low-level winds are out of the east, so if we have two mid-level flows that are essentially canceling out, the storm motion would be westward, and we have seen a shift in the model guidance over the last 24 hours away from the north Gulf Coast. All the troughing you can see off your screen here, a trough over the uh, mountain west, southwesterly flow over the Great Plains, this trough really never makes progress eastward over the next few days, so we're stuck in this region with a, a bit of bridging ridging over the Gulf of Mexico, and it's really difficult for the hurricane to actually make progress northward, and models have shifted away from a due northward track. So on the GFS now, you'll see a much more westward motion after it crosses Cuba. Out in the middle part of the Gulf of Mexico, again, this trough really never makes any eastward progress. Eventually, though, this ridge is uh, weakened to the north of the storm, and it does eventually turn on the GFS. So you see it start to make a move toward Louisiana while it weakens due to wind shear, which we talked about yesterday. Uh, but in general, the guidance has shifted, and more members of that guidance now take the storm farther west. You can see this on the European model as well, where the storm's a little bit farther south initially and is able to feel the influence of this western ridge more. And so we see a westward track for a longer time. And even out to four days, it's still chugging along, making progress westward over the Gulf of Mexico. And in this kind of position, it, you know, it really could go still both ways. It could turn north if this ridge weakens, and it could get shunted more toward the southwest if this ridge is strong enough. Much will depend on, you know, how far north is it at this time as it makes its turn toward the west. Whether it's here versus here, you know, could make a big difference over which branch of the flow it ultimately ends up taking. So there's a bit of a bifurcation here still in the track forecast, but it looks like the direct shot into this part of the coastline has become less likely in the guidance today. You'll see that in the GFS ensemble plot here. Yesterday, we had a lot of these members moving up into this region. We have seen quite a shift. There's still a whole group that moves into Louisiana or eastern Texas, uh, but a lot that are now turning towards the west-southwest or southwest 
as well. So quite a spread. You can see the bifurcation there. Still going to be difficult to figure out what direction the storm actually turns. The good news, though, you can see that in both cases, the colors go from orange and yellow to green and blue, which indicates a much weaker storm in the end game than what we see now and what we will see over the Gulf of Mexico. It may be strong for a little while, but it's inevitably going to encounter high shear and dry air. This is the GFS shear forecast for Friday morning in a couple of days. This is where Rafael will be centered. As we've been talking about, there's a huge shear gradient aligned across the northern Gulf of Mexico. So no matter what, if it approaches the Gulf Coast, it's going to encounter hostile conditions. And even if it moves due west toward Texas or Mexico, same thing will happen. Anything north of about this line, the storm is going to struggle quite a lot. There is the possibility that if it's more like the European model and its ensemble and it rides south, it may avoid a lot of this shear for a little while. And if it dives down towards Mexico, which some models do indicate, you know, perhaps it maintains itself for a longer period of time and maybe it's a threat to Mexico before it falls apart. But if it makes any kind of move toward U.S. territory, it is likely to encounter hostile conditions that prevent it from holding together. As an example, this is the GFS showing the mid-level moisture plot, symmetric ball of green right now, as we have a well-organized hurricane under low shear. As it moves out over the Gulf and turns west, you see it does maintain hurricane intensity during that time. There is some dry air to the west, but shear is still light to moderate, not strong. As it moves west, though, and starts to turn a little bit more toward the north, shear gets stronger, and you can start seeing asymmetries in the storm with moisture pushed off to the eastern side, dry air and brown color starting to envelop the storm core, and eventually this gets decoupled and completely falls apart, and uh, nothing really remains of this, and it doesn't even really make it to the north Gulf Coast because it decays too quickly and starts to move with the shallow flow off toward the west, and in this case, no storm actually impacts the U.S. Gulf Coast at all. If we look at the high-resolution hurricane guidance yesterday, uh, these models were taking this north and having it weaken before moving toward the central Gulf Coast. Today, we've seen a bit of a shift, along with the rest of the model guidance, more westward initially. So we start to see this turn after it crosses Cuba. And again, yes, we could see a strong hurricane out here over the Gulf of Mexico where water is still warm enough to support that and shear values are low enough to allow this to survive for a while. As it moves westward, you'll see periods of weakening and re-strengthening as it fights with the shear. In this case, it rides along far enough south that the shear doesn't really kill it during this whole time. Eventually, it reaches a moment where it really has a hard time and there's a lot more shear here in the western gulf at the same latitude, so it does nearly fall apart. But then ultimately, it actually turns southwestward and some kind of storm is able to survive perhaps shunted down into Mexico on the eastern side of this big Mexican ridge here because there was just not enough of a weakness to allow it to turn northward toward the U.S. So that's one possible outcome here. Again, lots of uncertainty. Uh, the shift has been more toward the left, towards the west and south today. It could easily shift back. We will see. Uh, but the moral of the story is that if it does try to turn north toward the U.S. Gulf Coast, the storm would weaken considerably or even dissipate before it can make it to the coastline. As far as any potential threat to Mexico, really too early to tell. If something like the HAFS model were to pan out, then we could see a legitimate storm threat to a portion of coastline, but this is four to five days in the future in a situation that is lower confidence than usual. So certainly nothing has been ironed out at this point as of yet. This is the National Hurricane Center official forecast, and along with most of the model guidance, they have shifted to the west as well. They were up here, uh, over the last couple of days, they have now shifted down more toward the south and toward the west, but you can see that there is weakening. It's a hurricane for a while, and then it weakens to a tropical storm by days four and five. You can see that it slows down a lot, too. Uh, the storm barely moves between the day four and day five forecast points. That's mostly just a reflection of the tremendous uncertainty. Uh, just like I'm telling you, the Hurricane Center also doesn't know whether it's going to go this way or that way. Really hard to tell at this point, and we'll just have to monitor trends over the next few days as the hurricane crosses Cuba and moves fairly harmlessly into the Gulf of Mexico. Obviously, hurricane warnings in the short term uh, will affect Cuba and hope everyone stays safe from the various hazards from wind, rain, and coastal flooding that will accompany Rafael over the next 12 to 24 hours. There is a tropical storm warning still for the dry Tortugas in western Florida Keys. If the storm is hooking toward the west, that does minimize the potential impacts there, but we could see elevated winds and rain bands impacting this area regardless. 
over the next 24 to 36 hours. So do be aware of that. Beyond 24 hours, though, once we get out into Thursday, uh, this is going to be affecting essentially nobody for some time, and it's just something to monitor. If you live in the West Central Gulf Coast or in Mexico, just keep an eye on the forecast. Again, quite a range of uncertainty here with the track. Not expecting a strong hurricane event, but something to keep an eye on just in case. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.